art. Our natural hour draws on a pace. Four happy days bring in another moon. But oh, me thinks how slow this old moon wings. She lingers my desires. Four days will quickly sleep themselves in night. Four nights will quickly dream away the time. And then the new moon shall behold the night of our solemnities. Go, Philistrate, stir up the Athenian youth to merriment. Hippolyta, I would thee with my sword, and when thy love during the injuries, but I will wed thee with another king, with pomp, with triumph, and with reveling. Happy be Theseus, I will now ned thee. Thanks, good Aegeus. What's the news with thee? Full of vexation, come I with complaint against my child, my daughter, Hermia. Send forth, Demetrius, my noble lord, this man hath my consent to marry her. Send forth, Lysander, and my gracious duke, this man hath bewitched the bosom of my child. Thou, thou, Lysander, thou hast given her rhyme and interchanged love tokens with my child. Thou hast by moonlight at her window sung with feigning voice verses of feigning love. With cunning hast thou filched my daughter's heart, turned her obedience, which is due to me, to stubborn harshness and my gracious stoop, because she will not hear before your grace. Consent to marry with Demetrius. I beg the ancient privilege of Athens, as she is mine. I may dispose of her, which shall either be to this gentleman or to her death, according to our law. What say you, Hermia? Be advised, fair maid. To you, your father should be as a god. Demetrius is a worthy gentleman. So is Lysander. In himself be, he is, but in this kind, wanting your father's voice, the other was beheld worthier. I would, my father looked but with my eyes. Rather, your eyes must with his judgment look. I do beseech your grace that I may know the worst that may befall me in this case. If I refuse to wed Demetrius... Either to die or death or to abjure forever the society of men. Therefore, fair Hermia, question your desires, whether if you yield not to your father's choice, you can endure the livery of a nun. So will I grow, so live, so die. My lord, ere I will yield my virgin pain up into his lordship. Take time to pause, and by the next new moon upon that day, either prepare to die or else wed Demetrius as he would, or on Diana's altar to protest for I austerity and single life. Relax, sweet Hermia, and Lysander yield. Thy praise a title to my certain right. You have her father's love, Demetrius. Let me have Hermia's. Do you marry him? Scornful Lysander! I am, my lord, as well derived as he, as well possessed. My love is more than him, and which is more than all these boasts can be. I am beloved of beauteous Hermia. Demetrius, I will vouch it to his head. Made love with Natter's daughter Helena and won her soul. And she, sweet lady, dotes upon the spotted and inconstant man. I must confess that I've heard so much, but Demetrius, come and come, Aegeus, you shall go with me. I have some private schooling for you both. For you, fair Hermia, look you arm yourself to fit your fancies to your father's will, or else the law of Athens yield you up to death or to vow of single life. Come, my Hippolyta, what cheer, my love? With duty and desire, we follow you. How now, my love? Why is your cheek so pale? 
how chance the roses did fade so fast. Be like for want of rain. I me, for all that I could ever read. The course of true love never did run smooth, for either it was different in blood. O oh, cross too high to be enthralled too low. Or else misgrafted in respect of years. O oh, spite too old to be engaged too young. Or else it stood upon the choice of friends. O oh, hell to choose love by another's eyes. Or if there were a sympathy in choice, war, death, or sickness did lay siege to it, making it momentary as a sound, swift as a shadow, short as any dream, brief as the lightning in a calling night, that in the spleen of folds both heaven and earth, and ere a man hath power to say, Behold, the jaws of darkness do devour it up, so quick bright things come to confusion. Then let us teach our trial patience, because it is a customary cross, as due to love as thoughts and dreams and sighs, wishes and tears, poor fancies followers. A good persuasion, therefore hear me, Hermia. I have a widow aunt, a dowager from Athens, and is her house remote seven leagues, and she respects me as her only son. There, gentle Hermia, may I marry thee. And to that place, the sharp Athenian law cannot pursue us. If thou lovest me, then steal forth thy father's house tomorrow night. And in the wood, a league without the town, there will I stay for thee. My good Lysander, I swear to thee by Cupid's strongest bow, by all the vows that ever men have broke, in number more than ever woman spoke, in that same place thou hast appointed me. Tomorrow truly will I meet with thee. He promised, love. Look, here comes Helena. Godspeed, fair Helena. Whither away? Call you me fair? That fair again and say to me, just loves your fair. Oh, happy fair. Oh, teach me how you look, and with what are you sway the motion of your heart. I frown upon him, yet he loves me still. Well, though your frowns would teach my smile such skill. I give him curses, yet he gives me love. Oh, that my prayers could such affection move. The more I hate, the more he follows me. The more I love, the more he hateth. His folly, Helena, is no fault of mine. None but your beauty would that fault were mine. Take comfort, he no more shall see my face. Lysander and myself will fly this place. Helen, tomorrow night, a time where lovers' life doth still conceal, through Athens' gate ye device to steal. And in the wood, where often you and I, upon faint primrose beds, were wont to lie, emptying our bosoms of their consul sweet, there my Lysander and myself shall meet. Farewell, sweet playfellow, pray thou for us, and good luck grant thee thy Demetrius. Happy summer, other sun can be. Through Athens, I am thought as fair as she. But what of that? Demetrius thinks not so. He will not know what all, but he do know. As he errs, doting on Hermia's eyes, so I, admiring of his qualities, things base and vile, holding no quantity. Love can transpose to form and dignity. Love looks not with the eyes, but with the mind, and therefore is winged Cupid painted blind. Or ere Demetrius looked on Hermia's eye, he held on oath that he was only mine. I will go tell him of fair Hermia's flight. And to the wood will he tomorrow night pursue her for this intelligence. If I had thanks, Dear expense, but here I'm going to mean to I enrich my pain to have his sight the third time back again.
Is all our company here? You were best to call them generally, man by man, according to the script. Here is a scroll of every man's name, which is thought fit through all Athens to play an art interlude before the Duke and the Duchess on his wedding day at night. First, good Peter Quince, say what the place is on, then read the names of the actors. Our play is the most lamentable comedy and most cruel death of Pyramus and Thisbe. A very good piece of work, I assure you. Now, good Peter Quince, call for your actors by the scroll. Master, spread yourselves. Nick Bottom the Weaver. Ready. Name a part I'm for. You, Nick Bottom, are set down for Pyramus. What is Pyramus, a lover or a tyrant? A lover that kills himself, most gallant for love. Thou will act some tears in the true performing bit, yet my chief humor is for a tyrant. I can play Hercules really. The raging rocks and the shivering shock shall break the locks of the prison gates, and Phoebus' car shall shard from far and make him mar the foolish fates. This was lofty. Now name the rest of the players. Francis Flute, the bellows mender. Here, Peter Quince. Flute, you must take Thisbe on you. What is, what is Thisbe? A wandering knight? It is the lady Pyramus must love. Nay, Faith, let me not play a woman. I have a beard coming. Let me play Thisbe too. I'll speak in a monstrous little voice. Thisbe, Thisbe. I have Pyramus, my liver dear. Thy Thisbe dear and lady dear. No, no. You must play Pyramus. And flute, you, Thisbe. Well, proceed. Robin Starveling the Tailor. Here, Peter Quince. Robin Starveling, you must play Thisbe's mother. Tom Snout the Tinker. Here, Peter Quince. You, Pyramus's father. Myself, Thisbe's father. Snug the Joiner. You, the lion's part. Have you the lion's part written? Pray you if it be given me, for I am slow of study. You may do it extempore. For it is nothing but roaring. Let me play the line too. I'll roar that I'll do any man's heart good to hear me. I'll roar that I'll make the Duke say, let him roar again, let him roar again. And you should do it too terribly. You would fright the Duchess and the ladies, and that were enough to hang us all. That, that, that would hang us, every mother's son. Every son. I will aggravate my voice that I will roar you as gently as any sucking dove. I will roar you as turf any nightingale. You can play no part but Pyramus. For Pyramus is a sweet faced man, a most lovely and gentleman like man. Therefore, you must needs play Pyramus. Wow. I'll undertake it. Masters, here are your parts. I am to entreat you to calm them by tomorrow night and meet me in the palace wood by moonlight. There we will rehearse. We will meet and there we may rehearse most obscenely and courageously. Take pains, be perfect, adieu. Spirit, whither wonder you? Over hill, over dale. Through brush, through briar. Over park, 
or repel. Throw a flood, throw a fire. We do wander everywhere, swifter than the moon's fear. We serve the fairy queen to do her orbs upon the green. Farewell, Valhalla spirits, we'll be gone. Our queen and our elves come here and on. The king doth keep his rebels here tonight. Take heed the queen come not within his sight, for Obron is passing fell and wrath, because that she as her attendant hath. A lovely boy stolen from an Indian king. She never had so sweet a changeling. And jealous of one would have the child, the knight of the train to trace the forest wild. And now they never meet in grove or green, by fountain clear or spangled starlight sheen. But they do fight and all their elves for fear. They creep into acorn cups and hide them there. Either I must take your shape and make it quick, or else you are that shrewd and knavish sprite called Robin Good Fellow. Are not you he that frightens the maidens of the villages? Those that hobgoblin call you and sweet puck, you do their work and they shall have good luck. Are not you he? Thou speaks all right. I am that merry wonder of the night. I jest to Oberon and make him smile. But make room, fairy, here comes Oberon. And here, my mistress, what the here we're gone! Ill missed by moonlight, proud Titania. What jealous, Oberon. Fairies, skip hence. I have forsworn his bed and company. Terry rash, wanton. Am not I thy lord? Then I must be thy lady. Why art thou here, come from the farthest step of India, but that forsooth the bouncing Amazon, your buskin the mistress and your warrior love? So Theseus must be wedded, and you come to give their bed joy and prosperity? How canst thou for shame to Tanya, glance at my credit while Palta, knowing I know thy love to Theseus? These are the forgeries of jealousy, and never since the middle summer spring met we on hill, in dale, forest, or mead, to dance our ringlets to the whistling wind. But with thy brawls, thou hast disturbed our sport. Therefore the winds, piping to us in vain, as in revenge have sucked up from the sea, contagious fogs which falling in the land Hath every pelting river made so proud that they have overborne their continents? The ox hath therefore stretched his yoke in vain. The plowman thus to sweat, and the green quin hath ride ere his youth attained the beard. The fold stands empty in the drowned field, and crows are fatted with the murine flock. The human mortals want their winter cheer. No night is now with him or Carol bless. Therefore the moon, the governess of floods, pale in her anger, washes all the air that rheumatic diseases do abound. And thorough this distemperature, we see the seasons alter. Hoary headed frost, all in the fresh lap of crimson rose. The spring the summer, the childing autumn, angry winter, change their wanted liveries, and the mazed world, by their increase, now know not which is which. And the same progeny of evils comes from our debate, from our dissension. We are their parents and original. Do you amend it then? It lies in you. Why should this time you across her old broad? I do will beg a little change in the to be my henchman. Set your heart at rest. The fairyland buys not the child of me. His mother was a votress of my order. And in the spiced Indian air by night, full often hath she gossiped by my side and sat with me on Neptune's yellow sands. But she being mortal of that boy did die. And for her sake, do I rear up her boy? For her sake, I will not part with him. How long within this wood intend you stay? Perchance till after Theseus' wedding day, 
If you'll patiently dance in our round and see our moonlight revels, go with us. Give me that boy and I will go with thee. Not for thy fairy kingdom. Fairies away, we shall shy down right if I longer stay. Well, go thy way. Thou shalt not from this grove till I torment thee for this injury. My gentle puck, come hither. Fetch me that flower, the herb I showed thee once. The juice of it on sleeping eyelids laid will make or man or woman madly dote upon the next life creature that it sees. Fetch me that herb. I'll put a good old round about the earth in 40 minutes. Having once this juice, I'll watch her tiny when she's asleep and drop the liquor of it in her eyes. The next thing then she waking looks upon, be it a lion, bear, or wolf, or bull. She shall pursue it with the soul of love. And ere I take this charm off her eyes, I'll make her render up the page to me. But who comes here? I am invisible, and I will overhear their conference. I love thee not, therefore pursue me not. Hence, get thee gone, and follow me no more. You draw me, you hard-hearted adamant. Leave you your power to draw, and I shall have no power to follow you. Do I entice you? Or rather do I not in the plainest truth tell you I do not nor cannot love you? Even for that, do I love you more? Neglect me, lose me, only give me leave, unworthy as I am to follow you. Tempt not too much the hatred of my spirit, for I am sick when I do look on thee. And I am sick when I look not on you. I'll run from thee and hide me in the brakes, and lead thee to the mercy of wild beast. The wildest hath not such a heart as you. I'll follow thee and make heaven of hell to die upon the hand I love so well. Fare thee well, nymph, ere he do leave this grove. Thou shalt fly him, and he shall seek thy love. Hast thou the flower there? Aye, there it is. I pray thee give it to me. I know a bank where wild time blows, where ox lips and nodding violets grow. There sleeps Titania, some time of the night. Lure in these flowers with dances and delight. There with the juice of this, I'll streak her eyes and make her full of hateful fantasies. Take thou some of it and seek through this grove. A sweet Athenian lady is in love with a disdainful youth, anoint his eyes, but do it when the next thing he aspires, may be the lady. Thou shalt know the man by the Athenian garments he hath on, and look thou meet me ere the first cock crow. Fear not, my lord, your servant shall do so. Come now, a fairy song. Sing me asleep, then to your offices and let me rest.
while all is well. One aloof stands then to know. What thou sees when thou dost wake, do it for thy true love take. Love and languish for his sake, be it on out or cat or bear, par or boar with bristled hair, in the eye that shall appear, when thou wakest it is thy dear. Wake when some vile thing is near. There's low. You faint with wandering in the wood. Well, rest the skirmia, if you think it good. Be it so, Lysander, find you out a bed. For I upon this bank will rest my head. One turf shall serve as a pillow for us both. One heart, one bed, two bosoms, and one troth. No, gentle friend, for love and courtesy, Lie further off in human modesty. So far, be distant. And good night, sweet friend. Thy love near alter till thy sweet life end. Amen. Amen. That fair prayer say I. Then and life when I am loyal tie. Through the forest have I gone, but a few found I none. Night in silence? Who's here? Weeds of Athens he doth wear. This is he my master said, despise the Athenian maid. Show upon thy eyes I throw all the power this charm doth owe. Stay, though thou kill me, sweet Demetrius. I charge thee hence, and do not haunt me thus. O oh, wilt thou darkling leave me? Do not so. Stay on thy peril, I alone will go. Oh, I am out of breath on this fond chase. The more my prayer, the lesser is my grace. But who is here? The sender? On the ground, dead or asleep? I see no blood, no wound. Lysander, if you live, good sir, awake. It run through fire, I will for thy sweet sake. Where's Demetrius? Oh, how fit a word to thou vile neighbor perish by my sword. Do not say so, Lysander. Say not so. Yet Hermia still loves you. Be content. Content with Hermia? No, I do repent. The tedious minutes I with her have spent. Not Hermia, the Helena I love, who will not change a dodo for a dove. Wherefore was I to this keen mockery born? When at your hands did I deserve this scorn? 
all that a lady of one man refused should of another therefore be abused. Oh. She says not Hermia. Hermia sleep thou there, and never may thou come Lysander near. And all my powers address to your love and might to honor Helen and to be her knight. Help me, Lysander, help me. Do thy best to pluck this crawling serpent from my breast. Hi me, for pity. What a dream was here. Lysander, look how I quake with fear. Methought his serpent ate my heart away, and you sat smiling at his cruel prey. Lysander? What removed? Lysander, Lord! What? Out of hearing? Gone? No sound? No word? No? Then I well perceive you are not by either death or you. I'll find immediately. Are we all met? Here's a convenient place for our rehearsal. This green plot shall be our stage. Peter Quince! What says thou, Willie Bottom? There are things in this comedy of Pyramus and Disby that will never please. First, Pyramus must draw a sword and kill himself, which the ladies cannot abide. How can I show you that? I'm gonna leave we must leave the killing out with honest men. No! I have a device to make all well. Write me a prologue and let the prologue seem to say we will do no harm with our swords and that Pyramus is not killed indeed. And so then I, Pyramus, am not Pyramus, but Bottom the Weaver. This will put them out of fear. Well, we will have such a prologue. Will not the ladies be afraid of the lion? I fear it. I promise you. Masters, you ought to consider with yourself to bring in a lion amongst ladies is the most dreadful thing. Therefore, another prologue must tell he is not a lion. Nay, you must name his name, and half of his face must be seen through the lion's neck, and he himself must speak, saying thus, Ladies, if you think I come here as a lion, it will please my life. I am no such thing. I am a man as other men are. And then let him tell them plainly he is no good joiner. No. It shall be so. But there are two hard things. One is to bring moonlight into the chamber. For you know Pyramus and Thisbe meet by moonlight. Does the moon shine the night we play our play? A calendar, a calendar! Yes, it does shine that night. Why then you may leave a casement of the great chamber window where we play open and the moon may shine in it at the casement? Aye, or else one must come in with a bush of thorns and a lantern and say he comes to this figure or to present the person of moonshine. Then there is another thing. We must have a wall. For Pyramus and Thisbe, says the story, did talk through the gap of a wall. You can never bring in a wall. What say you about him? Some man or other must present wall and let him have some plaster to signify wall and let him hold his fingers. Thus, and through that cranny shall Pyramus and this be whispered. If it may be, then all is well. Come, sit down, every mother's son, and rehearse your parts. Pyramus, you begin. What? A play toward? I'll get on it. An actor, too, perhaps, if I see the cause. Speak, Pyramus. This be stand forth. This, this be.
be. The flowers of odious savor sweet. Odorous. O odorous. Odorous savor sweet. So a half bad breath, my dear sis be dear, but hark, a voice stays down, but here a while, and bye bye, I will appear. A stranger pyramus than air play here. Must I speak now? Aye, must you. For you must understand, he goes but to see a noise that he heard, and is to come again. <clears throat> most radiant pyramus, most lily-like of lips, a nose like rose on a triumphant briar, most bristly juvenile, your cheeks are cow's lips. As true as true is horse, that yet will never tire. I'll meet thee, fair Pyramus, at Nini's tomb. Nina's tomb, ma'am. Um, why, you must not speak that yet. Um, that you answer to Pyramus. Speak all your part at once, cues and all. Pyramus, enter. Your cue is passed. It is never tired. Oh, <clears throat> as true as true as horse, that yell would never tire. If our fair heart is be our only sign. Oh, monstrous, so strange. We are haunted. Pray, masters, fly, masters. <laughs> I'll follow you. I'll lead you round about. Through bog, through bush. To break to fire. Sometimes a horse I'll be, sometimes a hound, a hawk, a headless bear, sometimes a fire, and neigh, and bark, and grunt, and roar, and the burn, like horse, hound, hog, bear, fire at every turn. Why would I run away? This is knavery of them to make me afraid. Oh, bottom, thou art changed. What do I see on thee? What do you see? An ass head of your own, do you? Bless thee, bottom. Bless thee. Thou art translated. I said a knavery. This is to make an ass of me, to frighten me. But I will not stir from this place. Do what they can. I'll walk up and down here, and I'll sing that they shall hear I am not afraid. The woo so cock so glad the we own a tiny bear. The thrust of wings is no so chill. The ram with little feet. What angel waits me for my flower today? The fish, the sparrow, and the lark, the plains on cuckoo gray. Who's no I pray thee, gentle mortal, sing again. Mine ear is much enamored of thy note. So is mine eye, enthralled to thy shape. And thy fair virtues, force per force, doth move me. I'm the first for you to say, hmm, to swear, I love thee. Me thinks, Mistress, you should have little reason for that. And yet, to see the truth, reason and love keep little company together nowadays. Thou art as wise as thou art beautiful. Not so neither. If I have wit enough to get out of this wood, I have enough to serve my own turn. Out of this wood do not desire to go. Thou shalt remain here, whether thou wilt or no. I am a spirit of no common rain. The summer still doth tend upon my state, and I do love thee. Therefore, go with me. I'll give thee fairies to attend on thee. Peas blossom, cobweb, moth, and mustard seed. Ready. And I. And I. And I. Where, Where shall, shall we go? go? Be kind and courteous to this gentleman. Feed him with apricots, dewberries, with purple grapes, green figs, and mulberries. 
Nod to him, elves, and do him courtesies. Hail, mortal! Hail. 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 I cry your worship's mercy. Hargi, I beseech your worship's name. Cobweb. I shall desire of you more acquaintance, good master Cobweb. Your name on this mistress? Peace Blossom. Good mistress Peace Blossom. I shall desire of you more acquaintance too. Your name, I beseech you, sir? Mustard Seed. Good Master Mustard Seed, I promise you and your kindred have made my eyes water air now. <laughs> I desire more of your acquaintance, good Master Mustard Seed. Come wait upon him. Lead him to my bower. <laughs> Tie up my lover's tongue. Bring him silently. I wanted to tie a bee weight. Here comes my messenger. How now, mad spirit? My mistress with a monster is in love. <gasps> Near to her clothes and consecrated bower, a crew patches rude mechanicals were met together to rehearse a play. The weaver <laughs> who braved pyramids did play, <laughs> was took a scene and entered in a break. When I did him at this advantage take, and as his no, I fixed it on his head. When in the moment, so it came to pass. The Tanya waked and straightway loved and asked. This falls out better than I could devise. But hast thou yet latched the Athenian's eye with the ledges as I did bid thee do? I took him sleeping, that is finished too, and the Athenian woman by his side, that when he waked a force, she must be eyed. Stand close, just the same Athenian. This is the woman, but not the man. <gasps> oh, I rebuke you have loved you so. Now I but chide, but I should use thee worse, for thou, I fear, hast given me cause to curse. If thou hast slain Lysander in his sleep, then kill me too. Would he have stolen away from sleeping Hermia? Where is he? Ah, uh, good Demetrius, wilt thou give him me? I had rather give his carcass to my hound. Out, dog, out, cur! Thou drivest me past that bound of maiden's patience. Hast thou slain him then? Henceforth be never numbered among men. I am not guilty of Lysander's blood, nor is he dead, for aught that I can tell. I pray thee, tell me then that he is well. And if I could, what should I get there for? A privilege never to see me more, and from thy hated presence part I so. See me no more, whether he be dead or no. There is no falling her in this fierce vein. Here, therefore, for a while, I will remain. What hast thou done? Thou hast mistaken quite, and laid the love juice on some true lover's side. About the wood, go swifter than the wind. And Helena of Athens, look thou find. By some illusion, see thou bring her here. I'll charm his eyes against she do appear. I go, I go, look how I go, swifter than an arrow from the charter's bow. Flower of this purple dye. Sinking apple of his eye. When thou wakes, if she be by, beg of her for remedy. Captain of our fairy band, Helma is here at hand, and the youth is stuck by me, pleading for a lover's feet. 
tell me their fond pageant see lord what fools these mortals be stand aside the noise they make will cause demetrius to awake Then we'll do at one to one. That must needs be sport alone. And those things do best please me that prepare preposterously. Why should you think that I should rule in scorn? Scorn and derision never come in tears. Look what I vow, I weep and vow so born. In their nativity, all truth appears. You do advance your coming more and more. These vows are hung as. Will you give her or? I had no judgment what to her I swore. No, none in my mind. Now you give her or. Demetrius loves her, and he loves not you. <sighs> oh, Helen, goddess nymph, perfect divine. To what my love shall I compare thine eye? First was muddy, oh how ripe and show. Thy lips those kissing cherries tempting grow. Oh spite, oh hell, I see you all are bent. To set against me for your merriment. If you were men, as men you are in show, you would not use a gentle lady so to vow and swear and super praise my parts when I am sure you hate me with your hearts. You are unkind, Demetrius. Be not so, for you love Hermia. This you know, I know. Lie, Sander. Keep thy Hermia. I will none. If e'er I loved her, all oh, that love is gone. My heart to Helen now is home returned, there to remain. Helen, it is not so. Look where thy love comes, yonder is thy dear. Thou art not by mine eye, Lysander found mine ear. I think it brought me to thy sound, but why unkindly didst thou leave me so? Why should he stay, whom love, love doth press to go? What love could press Lysander from my side? Lysander's love, though, will not let him bide. Fair Helen, who more in guilt tonight than all yon fiery orbs and eyes of light. Why seekst thou me? Could not this make thee know? The hate I bear thee made me leave thee so. You speak not as you think. It cannot be. Now I perceive. They have conjoined all three to fashion this full sport in spite of me. Injurious Hermia was the ungrateful maid. Have you forgot the counsel that we have shared? The sisters vow the hours that we have spent all school days friendship, childhood innocence. Will you rend our ancient love asunder? To join with men and scorn your poor friend? It's not friendly, tis not maidenly. I'm amazed at your passionate words. I scorn you not. It seems that you scorn me. Have you not set Lysander as in scorn to follow me and praise my eyes and face? And made your other love Demetrius, who even but now did spurn me with his foot? To call me goddess, nymph, divine, and rare, precious, celestial, wherefore speaks he this? By your setting on, by your consent. I understand not what you mean by this. I do. Persever, counterfeit sound looks, wink at each other. Hold the sweet jest up. If you have any pity, 
grace or manners, you would not make me such an argument. But fare ye well. Stay gentle, Helena. Hear my excuse. My love, my life, my soul, fair Helena. Oh, excellent. Please do not scorn her so. Helen, I love thee. By my life, I do. I say, I love thee more than he can do. Lysander, where to tends all this? Hang off, thou cat, thou fur, wild thing. Let loose. Why are you grown so rude? What change is this, sweet love? Thy love, O oh, hated potion. <laughs> Am not I Hermia? Are not you Lysander? Why then you left me? Oh, the gods forbid! In earnest shall I say? In my life, never did desire to see thee more. To be certain, nothing truer. Tis no jest that I do hate thee and love Helena. Oh me, you juggler, you canker blossom, you thief of love! Why have you come by night and stolen my love's heart from him? Have you no modesty, no maiden shame? Fie, fie, you counterfeit, you puppet, you. Puppet, why so? I that way goes the game. Now I perceive that she hath made compare between our statures. She hath urged her height with her personage, her tall personage. Her height forsooth she has prevailed with him. And are you grown so high in his esteem because I am so dwarfish and so low? How low am I, thou painted maple? Speak! How low am I? I am not yet so low, but that my nails can reach into thine eyes. I pray you, though you mock me. Gentlemen, let her not hurt me. Perhaps you may think because she is something lower than myself, that I can match her. Lower? Hark again. Good Hermia, be not so bitter with me. I evermore did love you, Hermia. She shall not harm me. No, sir, she shall not, although you take her part. Oh, when she's angry, she is keen and shrewd. She was a vixen when we went to school. And though she be but little, she is fierce. Little? Again? Nothing but low and little? Let me come to her. Get you gone, you dwarf, you minaret, you minimus of hindering not grass made, you bead, you acorn. You are too officious, and her behalf that scorns your services. Let her alone speak not of Helena. Now follow if thou dare, to see who's right, of thine or mine, is most in Helena. Follow? Nay, I'll go with thee, cheek by jowl. You mistress, all this coil is long of you. Nay, go not back. I will not trust you. No longer stay in your cursed company. Your hands than mine, quicker for a fray. My legs are longer to, huh, to run away. I'm amazed and know not what to say. This is thou negligence. Still thou mistakes, or else commence thy knaveries willfully. Believe me, King of Shadows, I mistook. Did you not tell me I should know the man by the Athenian garments he had on? Thou seest these lovers seek a place to fight. Hi, therefore, Robin, overcast tonight, and lead these testy rivals so astray as one come 
not within another way. Then crushed this herb into Lysander's eye, whose liquor hath with virtuous property to take from thence all error with his might and make his eyeballs roll with want sight. One day next wake, all this derision shall seem a dream and fruitless vision. Up and down, up and down, I will lead them up and down. I will peer to the field and the town. Have them lead them up and down. Here comes one. Where art thou, proud Demetrius? Speak thou now. Here blooms red and red. Where art thou? I will be with thee straight. Follow me then to play the ground. Lysander, speak again. Thou runaway, thou coward, who art thou fled? Thou coward, art thou bragging to the stars and will not come? I'll whip thee with a rod. Yeah? Art thou there? My voice will try no manhood here. He goes before me and still dares me on. I come where he calls, then he is gone. I follow fast, but faster he did fly. That fallen am I in dark, uneven way, and here will rest me. <sighs> Go down, gentle day. <laughs> How can coward, why comes thou not? Thou runs before me, shifting every place, and dare not stand or look me in the face. Where art thou now? Come hither, I am here. Now go thy way. Fitness constrains me to measure out my length on this cold bed. By day's approach, look to be visited. Oh, sleep that sometimes shuts up Storo's eyes. Tell me a while for my own company. Yep, but three, come one more. Two of both kinds make up four. Here she comes, cursed and sad. Cupid is a knavish lad. Thus, to make poor females mad. <laughs> never so weary, never so in woe. I can no further crawl, no further go. Here will I rest to the break of day. Heaven shield Lysander, if they mean a fray. On the ground, sleep sound. I'll apply to... Your eye, gentle lover remedy. When thou wakest, thou takest true delight in the sight of thy former lady's eye. Come sit thee down upon this flowery bed. Where's Peas Blossom? Ready. Scratch my head, Peas Blossom. Where's Monster Cobweb? Ready. <laughs> Monster Cobweb, good monster, get your weapons in hand and kill me, Red Hip Tumblebee, on the top of a thistle. And good, Monster, bring me a honey bag. Where is Monster Mustard Seed? 
What's your will? Nothing good, Monsieur, but to help Peas Blossom to scratch. I must fool the barbers, Monsieur, for me thinks I am marvelous hairy about the face. What? Wilt thou hear some music, my sweet love? I have a reasonable good ear and music. Let's have the tongs and the bones. Or say, sweet love, what thou desires to eat. I mean, think that I have a great desire to a bottle of hay. Good hay, sweet hay, hath no fellow. I have a venturous fairy that shall seek these squirrels' hoard and fetch thee new nuts. I pray you, let none of your people stir me. I have an exposition of sleep come upon me. Sleep thou, I will wind thee in my arms. Fairies, be gone, and be always away. Oh, how I love thee. Oh, how I dote on thee. Welcome, good Robin. Seest thou this sweet sight? Her dotage, now I do begin to pity. For meeting her of late behind the wood, I then did ask of her changeling boy, which straight she gave me, and her fairy sense, to bear him to my bower in fairyland. And now I have the boy. I will undo this hateful imperfection of her eyes. And gentle Puck, take this transformed scalp from off the head of the Athenian swing, that he waking one the others do. May all to Athens back again repair, and think no more of this night's accident, but as the fierce vexation of a dream. But first I release the fairy queen. Yes, thou last want to be. Yes, thou last want to see. Now, my Titania, wake you, my sweet queen. My Oberon, what visions have I seen? Methought I was enamored of an ass. There lies your love. How came these things to pass? Silence a while. Robin, take off his head. Titania, music call. Music, come, music, such as torment to sleep. Now when thou wakes with thine own fool's eyes. Peep. <laughs> Sound music. Come, my queen, take hands with me, and rock the round we're on, these sleepers be. Now thou and I are new in amity, 
will dance in Theseus' house triumphantly and bless it to all their prosperity. Fairy queen, attendant mark, I do hear the morning lark. Then my fairy queen, and silent sad, trip we after the night shade. We the glow can come past soon, swifter than the wandering moon. Come, my lord, and in our flight, tell me how it came this night, that I sleeping here was found with these mortals on the ground. Go, one of you, find out the forester. My love shall hear the music of my hound. I was with Hercules and Cadmus once. One in a wood of Crete, they bade the bear with hounds of Sparta. I never heard so musical a discord, such sweet thunder. My hounds are bred out of the Spartan kind, slow in pursuit, but matched in mouth like bells. Judge when you hear, but soft. What mints are these? My lord, this is my daughter, here asleep. And this, Lysander. This, Demetrius is. This, Helena, old Netter's Helena. I wonder of their being here together. Go bid the huntsmen, wake them with their horns. Good morrow, friends. Pardon, my lord. I pray you all stand up. I know you two are rival enemies. How comes this gentle concord in the world? My lord, I shall reply amazedly. I cannot truly say how I came here, but as I think, or truly what I speak, I came with Hermia hither. Our intent was to be gone from Athens, where we might, without the peril of the Athenian law. Enough, enough, my lord, you have enough. I beg the law, the law upon his head. They would have stolen away, they would, Demetrius, thereby to have defeated you and me, you of your wife and me of my consent, of my consent that she shall be your wife. My lord, fair Helen told me of their stealth, of this their purpose hither to this wood, and I and Fury hither follow them. But my good Lord, I know not by what, what power, but by some power it is, my love to Hermia, melted as the snow, seems to me now as the remembrance of an idol god, which in my childhood I did dote upon. And all the faith, the virtue of my heart, the object and the pleasure of mine eye is only Helena. To her, my Lord, was I betrothed ere I saw Hermia. But like a sickness, I did loathe this food. But as in health, come to my natural taste. Now I do wish it, love it, long for it, and will forevermore be true to it. Fair lovers, you are fortunately met. Aegeus, I will overbear your will. For in the temple, by and by, with us, these couples shall eternally be knit. Come, Hippolyta. These things seem small and undistinguishable, like far-off mountains turned into clouds. Methinks I see these things with parted eye, when everything seems double. So he thinks, and I have found Demetrius like a jewel, my own and not my own. And are you sure that we are awake? It seems to me that yet we sleep. 
We dream. Do not you think the Duke was here and bid us follow him? Yeah, and my father. And Hippolyta. If he did bid us follow to the temple? Why then? We are awake. Let's follow him. And by the way, let us recount our dreams. Why not you guys call me and I will answer? Peter Quince? Book the Bells Mender? Snout the Tinker? Starveling? Stolen hands and left me asleep? I had a most rare vision. I've had a dream. Past the wit of man to say what dream it was. Man is but an ass if you go about to expound this dream. Me thought it was. There's no man can tell what. Me thought it was. Me thought it had. Man, but man is but a past fool if you will offer to say what me thought I had. The eye of man hath not heard. The ear of man hath not seen. Man's hand is not able to taste nor his tongue to conceive, nor his heart to report what my dream was. I will get Peter Quinn to write a ballad of this dream. It shall be called Bottom Dream because they have no bottom. I will sing it in the latter end of the play before the Duke. Have you sent to Bottom's house? Has he come home yet? He cannot be heard of. I don't doubt he is transported. If he come not, the, the plane is marred. It goes not forward. Does it? It is not possible. We have not a man in all Athens able to discharge Pyramus but he. Masters, the duke is coming from the temple, and there is two or three lords and ladies more married. If our sport has gone forward, we have all been made men. Oh, sweet bully bottom! Thus has he lost sixpence a day from his life? If the duke had not given him a sixpence a day for playing pyramus, I'll be hanged! Where are these lads? Where are these hearts? What a oh, courageous day! Oh, most happy hour! Masters, I am to discourse you wonders, but ask me not what, for if I tell you, I am no true Athenian. Let us hear, sweet bottom. Not a word of me. All that I can tell you is that the Duke have died. Get your apparel together. Meet presently at the palace. Every man look over his part. For the short and long is our plate is preferred. Let this we have clean linen and most dear actors eat no onions nor garlic, for we are to utter sweet breath. And I do not doubt but to hear them say it is a sweet comedy. No more words. Go away. Go away. Tis strange, my Theseus, that these lovers speak of. More strange than true. I never may believe these antique fables, nor these fairy toys. Lovers and madmen have such seething brain, such shaping fantasies, that apprehend more than cool reason ever comprehend. The lunatic, the lover, and the poet are of imagination all compact. One sees more devils than a vast heck can hold. This is the madman. The poet's eye doth glance from heaven to earth to earth to heaven. As imagination bodies forth, 
the forms of things unknown, the poet's pen turns them to shapes and gives the airy nothing a local habitation and a name. Such traits have strong imagination. If it would but apprehend some joy, it comprehends the bringer of that joy. Or in the night, imagining some fear, how easy is a bush supposed they bear? But all the story of the night told over, and all their minds transfigure so together, more with a set than fancies images, and grows to something of great constancy. But how so ever strange and admirable. Here comes the lovers, full of joy and mirth. What revels are in hand? Is there no play? Coffin is straight. Here, mighty Theseus. Say what abridgment have you for this evening? What entertainment? How shall we beguile? The lazy time, if not, with some delight. There is a brief humming sports all right. The choice of which your highness will see first. The battle with the centaurs to be sung by an Athenian to be harp. Well, none of that. A tedious brief scene of, of young Pyramus and his love these be. Very tragic mirth, merry and tragical, tedious and brief. That is hot ice and wandering strange snow. How shall we find the concord to, of this discord? A play there is, my lord, some ten words long, which is as brief as I have done a play. But by ten words, my lord, it is too long, which makes it tedious. For in all the play, there is not one word apt, one player fitted. And tragical, my noble lord, it is, for pyramids therein doth kill himself. Which when I saw rehearsed, I must confess, in mine eyes water, but more merry tears the passion of loud laughter never shed. What are they that do play it? Hard-handed men that work in Athens here, which never labored in their minds till now, and now have toiled their unbreathed memories with this same play against your nuptial. And we will hear it. No, my noble lord, it is not for you. I have heard it over, and it is nothing, nothing in the world, unless you can find sport in their intents. Extremely stretched and caused with cruel pain to do you service. And we will hear that play, for never anything could be amiss when simpleness and duty tender it. Go bring them in and take your places, ladies. He says they can do nothing in this kind. The kinder way to give them thanks for nothing. So please, Your Grace, the prologue is addressed. Let them approach. Gentles, perchance you wonder at this show, but wonder on, till truth make all things plain. This man is Pyramus, if you would know. This beauteous lady, this be is certain. This man, with lime and rough cast, doth present wall, the vile wall which did these lovers sunder. This man, with lantern, dog, and a bush of thorn, presents his moonshine. This grisly beast, which the lion hight by name, the trusty Thisbe, coming first by night did scare away, or rather, did affright. And as she fled, her mantle she did fall, which the lion, a vile with bloody mouth, did stain. Anon comes Pyramus, sweet youth and tall, and finds his trusty Thisbe's mantle slain. Whereat, with blade, with bloody, 
flame full blade, he bravely broached his boiling bloody breast. And Thisbe, tarrying in the mulberry shade, his dagger drew and died. In this same instance, it doth befall that I once not by name present a wall, and such a wall as I was shown may have, that had in it a cranny hole or gap through which the lovers, famous and Thisbe, did whisper often very secretly. It is the woodiest partition that ever I heard this chorus. Pyramus draws near the wall. Silence! Oh, grim look night, oh, night with hue so black, oh, night, which ever I one day is not, oh, night, oh, night, alack, 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 I fear my business promise is forgot, and thou, O oh wall, O oh sweet, O oh lovely wall, that stand between above this ground and mine, thou wall, O oh wall, O oh sweet and lovely wall, Show me that gap to blink through with mine eye. Thanks, courteous wall. Joe she well for this. No, what see I? No, Disney do I see. Oh, wicked wall, through whom I see no bliss. Curse be thy stone for dust deceiving me. The wall, methinks, being sensible, should curse again. No, who truths her, she should not. Deceiving me, this be too. She's the answer now. Down she comes. Oh, wall, full often thou hast thou heard my moans for parting my fair pyramus and th me. I see a voice. Now will I to the gap to spy if I can hear my Disney's face. Tis me? My love, thou art my love, I think. Oh, kiss me through the whole of this vile wall. <laughs> I kissed the walls. Oh, not your lips at all. Well, that our ninnies to meet me straight away. Nine is Tomb. Tide life, tide death. I come without delay. Thus have I, while my part discharged so, and being done, thus while away doth go. This is the silliest stuff that never I heard. The best. In this kind are but shadows, and the worst are no worse if imagination amend them. That must be your imagination then, and not theirs. If we imagine no worse of them than they of themselves, they may pass up for excellent men. Here come two normal beasts, and a man and a lion. You ladies, you whose gentle hearts do fear, the smallest monstrous mouse that creeps on floor, may now perchance both quake and tremble here. When lion rough and wild as rage doth roar, then know that I, as snug the joiner, am no lion fell, nor else no lion dam. For if I should as lion come in strife into this place, twere pity on my life. A very gentle beast and of a good conscience. Let us listen to the moon. This man turned not the horned moon present. He should have worn the horns on his head. This man turned not the horned moon present. Myself, the man in the moon, do seem to me. This is the greatest error of all the rest. The man should be put into the lantern. How? Is it else the man in the moon? 
All that I have to say is to tell you that the lantern is the moon. I am the man in the moon. This thorn bush, my thorn bush, and this dog, my dog. Why? All these should be in the lantern, for all these are in the moon. But silence, here comes this bee. This is only these two. Where is my love? Roar! Whoa, Roar the Lion. Whoa, Run Thisby. Well shown, Moon. Truly the moon shines with a good grace. I thank thee, Moon, for shining now so bright. But stay, O oh, Sprite. What dreadful dolls here! Oh, dainty duck, oh dear! Thy mantle good. What? Stay with blood? Eshrew my heart, but I pitied the man. Oh, wherefore, nature, did thou lion swing? Since lion bile hath here deflowered, my dear, come tears confound, out forth and wound the heart of Pyramus. Thus thy eye, thus. Thus, thus. Now I'm dead, now I'm fled. My soul is in the sky. Tongue, move thy light. Moon, take thy flight. Now die. Die! 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 How chance Moonshine is gone before this bee comes back and finds her lover. She will find him by starlight. Here she comes, and her passion will end the play. Asleep, my love? What then, my dove? Oh, Pyramus, arise. These lily lips, this cherry nose, these yellow cowslip cheeks are gone, are gone. <laughs> Lovers make moan. <laughs> His eyes are green as leeks. Tongue, uh, not a word. Come, trusty sword. Come, blade. My breast in do. Ah! <laughs> and farewell, my friends. Thus, this be ends. Adieu, adieu, adieu. Moonshine and lion are left to bury the dead. Will it please, will it please to see the epilogue or to hear a burgomaster dance? No epilogue, I pray you, for your play needs no excuse, very notably discharge. But come, your burgomaster.
12. Lovers to bed. Tis almost fairy time. Now it is the time of night that the graves all gape with wide. Everyone lets forth his sprites in the churchway paths to glide. And we fairies that do run by the triple hecate team from the presence of the sun, following darkness like a dream. Now we're frolic. Not a mouse shall disturb this hollow house. I am sent to the room before to sweep the dust behind the door. Through the house, it gives glimmering light by the dead and drowsy fire. Every elf and fairy sprite hop as light as bird from briar. And this ditty after me, sing and dance it trippingly. First rehearse your song by rote, to each word a warbling note. Hand in hand with fairy grace, we shall sing and bless this place. Fill a mouth with melody, sing an arts, we love. Now until the break of day, through the house each fairy stray, to the best bride bed will we, which by us shall blessed be. And the issue there create, ever shall be fortunate, so shall all the couples three, ever true and loving be. With this field do consecrate, every fairy holds this gate, and each several chamber blessed through the palace with sweet peace and the owner of it blessed ever shall in safety rest trip away make no stay meet me all by break of day if we shadows have offended think but this and all is mended that you have but slumbered here, while these visions did appear. And this weak and the idle theme, no more yielding but a dream. Gentles do not reprehend, if you pardon, we will mend. And as I am an honest puck, if we have unearned luck, now to escape the serpent's tongue, we will make amends for long. I'll the puck a liar call, so good night unto you all. Give me your hands if we be friends, and Robin shall restore men's.
Today my hand helped me eat. Today my hand helped me get on Roblox and cheat. Today my hand helped me cook. Today my hand helped me read a book. Today my hand climbed a tree. Today my hand got cut. Today my hand got stung by a bee. Today my hand lifted up. Today my hands brushed my hair. Today my hands touched my spoon. Today my hands played with my sand. Today my hand touched my other hand. My hand played Roblox. Today my hand brushed my hair and my teeth. Today my hand made my food. Today my hand put on my costume. Today my hands were playing with my kitten. Today my hands were painting. Today my hands were playing on my phone. Today my hands were doing my hair for today. Today my hands were planting flowers.